all right so we got our dutch oven over here man and uh getting the fire going Let's see what we got in here oh looking good gonna go into this fire man ha 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 hey it's sunday sunday afternoon time to cook we had covered uh, in my last vlog was about uh, tents, choosing a tent, a place to stay, but no really kitchen at that tent. And then uh, we ended up here at the Ifago hut. But there's another component to the hut system, it is the kitchen. So I wanted to show you uh, um, our line of kitchens out here. Uh, so the most basic one, wood fired. We do, we do have wood fired kitchens. Uh, no propane, no gas, no electric, you know, and this is one of them over here and this is actually another tent hut style uh, That the uh, man who built all this when he moved here um, He built this right away for his own living space. So uh, it's good. So we have a fence in the back So if you need to get into a place to perch and build your camp and you're in a lot if you can get get your back against a fence uh, is the first thing and this is all our materials that he found on site and he just tossed up just basic wood and lashings around there and inside um, so he he built up in there so very important here to get the uh, wind off of you so you can actually start to cook and down here is his kitchen that he built his supplies memento supplies and such is back in here but he would spend the majority of his time in this little spot. You know, the wood is still here and the fire is still here. So cooking over the fire, you see the pots and the pans, you know, it's all fi fire blackened. And so, yeah, you know, traditional ways is getting, buying, you know, pots and pans at the uh, Goodwill or whatever, but then just cooking over a fire. And, um... I was going to film up here today because what we're making is using a Dutch oven. You know what a Dutch oven is? Well, the next shot or the previous shot showed you. We're going to show you what Dutch oven cooking is about. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. His style was here. Oh, well, what do you got? Weeds in here. And he left it when, when uh, Mamerta left. He just kind of like left everything in place, trusting that it's all going to be here. It's not going to disappear. And that's a no, whole nother vlog coming up at some point is trust and your and your stuff. Here you leave your stuff uh, open and it's going to not be taken or anything. So this whole thing of theft and protection, this is a big subject about camp is you get in the right camp. You don't have to worry about your stuff. Anyways, that's another vlog in the near future. So back to the fire. We're going to cook today Dutch oven um maybe we'll cook it up here you know maybe i'll get this fire going yeah i should get the fire going and here's another little fire it's an old wheel you know it's an old wheel off a car but has a place cut out and you build the fire and the heat comes up through there so you just sit here you know on a little perch and uh you got your um comfort place here and if you have a bench to lay on look at this beautiful carved bench um but yeah you just hover you know and you got your back against the back fence wall and this is really comfy so um i don't want to when you're when you're camped out perched out not in a great place but if you can get uh, a wall up and then build this above let's keep going here so the next part is out on an end you put two posts put a post here this is about six feet out from the the back wall and there's another one down at that end then you get a, a you use lashings instead of nails so much and just put together a beam and then put uh he used bamboo we brought the bamboo and then we put the tarp over the top so it's very simple structure here and uh, things we just find. Here's an old two by four that uh, Mamerta found. Oh, you use a screw over here. So you kind of, you know, tools. That's another vlog in the future is what tools when you're 
really mobile living, living in a car or maybe a, a, a truck with a trailer or something. Maybe you have storage. How, how much tools can you take with you? You can't take the shop. But anyways, yeah, so just lashing it together and getting a, getting a uh, tarp that you get at the home center uh, or such and uh, put those in. So yeah, our kitchen, this is our most basic can kitchen at Camp Bulalaya and you can practice with this. You know, a big part of kitchen stuff is um, cooking for a number of people or guests. We have guests over there in, in the hut and uh, we're gonna make a meal all cooked by fire. And that's kind of a, a important part. And we've got our coolers, but we uh, got our supplies, I should say. And uh, they still sit, they're not moving. They've been like this here for a couple months. So yeah, things don't move in the proper camp. Wouldn't that be cool? You don't have to set the alarms and lock the doors and all that. If you lived in a camp in your tribe and all your stuff is just fine. It, uh, we're not gonna mess with it, really. Unless we need to move it out of the way, but we'll communicate with that and and uh, this whole thing about there. So man, I got six minutes long. Let's go down and chop some vegetables and make this Dutch oven. Hey, remember when the vlog early on, I made this as a, into our kitchen. This is our main kitchen. Hi. Our main kitchen, uh, I've improved today. I brought the table up. So it's mobile, you know, saw horses, anything that holds it up. This is an old stool. I just put these uh, planks in that we had up there below, above. They sat for too many months. And now look at this, man. We have a, uh, a dishwashing station and a cooking station. Yeah, I carved this today and working on this. Uh, this is actually oak. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got it for free. And then here, my Dutch oven, man. Yeah, so you build the fire and uh, cook in here. So what do we got? Nothing yet. Um, but we're gonna cook, cook up. I got my supplies. This is gonna be vegetarian. You know, we... I find that uh, cooking meat a lot out in these community kitchens creates grease and stinkiness and then it attracts more rodents. So yeah, there's all these issues, huge issues about uh, the so-called homeless kitchen. Yeah, yeah, most people say, oh man, this guy's a homeless man. And, uh, but yeah, okay, let's say I am a homeless guy, but uh, how do I cook and eat uh, out here when there's uh, no running water around? All right, let's chop some veggies. All right, so yeah, I got my yams, beets, greens, cauliflower, canned stuff. And uh, I'll start by washing up in our sink. You know, the foot pump sink, which is in another vlog. I show that, that these are the foot pump sinks because we don't have running water. So I'm going to wash up all these and then chop them up on the board. Hey, I got to get my knife and I'm, I'm going to build the fire down here because I already have my wood chopping block. Yeah, let's, uh, I got my, my kitchen knife here to cut vegetables, my bolo, and, uh, we'll get, uh, going over here and yeah, let's, let's make a fire right there. I've been digging this out yesterday and we're, um, I have this other project of our, our garden and such but i have to remove all this material and it's all heavy rocks this is such hard work people you're breaking rocks apart but i'm going to build a fire right here and uh we're going to do dutch oven uh right here in our kitchen man so man uh imagine that having a fire like right next to your house oh my all goes into our uh, compost we have a compost system here too to show you that so yeah we're primarily the vegetable base goes into our compost bucket which is right here and i'm actually using the wrong knife this is kind of a little out of control let me get a better knife and this one i could hurt myself take it back to the chopping block but i got it all clean everything's clean in the kitchen right here so uh, yeah i just put this back and uh 
So we'll get onion and then we'll put it all inside down at the bottom of the Dutch oven, fill this up and layer it up. It will look really good. Minimal refrigeration. So anyways, uh, you are experiencing since you went, so many people and yourself have gone out and stocked up on supplies because of the, the pandemic. And uh, so a lot of those supplies are starting to go rotten. So it is a huge amount of food waste. So a good person, a good camp manager or kitchen manager or whomever develops their people into your gut. You eat what's going worst first, you know, uh, minimize the casualties in your food is by looking in your, in your supplies and say, Ooh, man, this thing's getting a little dim. And you know, most of the, uh, you know, the hyper clean people will throw it away, but no, we're going to eat it, man. So you, you, a lot of this stuff is the oldest, you know, look at it, any of these old leaves. I was going to cook up these greens bits. I still will clean it up. It's perfectly fine. It's just, it's uh, got a little bacteria and things on it, but we're going to peel some of this. I don't peel the whole thing. I take the ends up and I chop them up and we'll put it inside and make it look all pretty. So it's all these steps in the kitchen. And I used to live in those really fancy kitchens like, uh, you see everywhere, you know, the, 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 the um, perfect kitchen, million shows, but I've gone away from that. I've reduced down to uh, an open space. I'm going to cook on a wood fire that's hasn't, there's no fireplace there, man. And there's no barbecue. We're all, we're all just doing our thing. And so it's always a road to improvement like this improvement today. This was just today is building these, um, tables you know saw horses tables and this so this is a mobile kitchen you can take this around this is my dish drying set in here it's, you know it's got the thing so i dry my dishes my cook stove over here excuse me guys it's not perfectly clean this is a working kitchen so um and of course uh keeping the place clean clean as we can one person you don't care so much you know you think of those messy homeless people and they leave trash around and their crap and trash well yeah they're stressed out and uh, they haven't learned how to do the proper skills on 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 keeping a, a clean outdoor kitchen so this is an outdoor kitchen the real thing uh, um, once you have more than like three people or four people, four people, um, is get a, a person who's responsible, primarily responsible for the kitchen. And they're really watching and emphasizing cleanliness, hands, products, because we're sharing those resources. Um, right now, like this is early April, 2020, and uh, the pandemic going through out on the Navajo reservations where people cook and eat like this all the time. Millions of people eat this way, folks. Um, cook, prepare. You know, we don't have the modern, modern fancy kitchens that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and such. You know, we're getting away from that. And uh, yeah, do these yams here. I think I just leave the skins on because I can't find the peeler right now. Somebody else used the peeler. So yams, um, those will go in. But anyways, cleanliness, you know, is, is at some point, like around four people, once you get into your kitchen, uh, even two, <laughs> but four really is like, get a person who's gonna be responsible for a while. You know, are they going to be there at the kitchen? This is going into my compost bucket down below. And um, I'll get those in. These have been washed. They've dried out already in the air. And so we'll get those. Uh, we got an old bell pepper that needs to be eaten. That will go in there. Uh, the red enchilada shash. Oh, and I'm actually going to put some hominy in there. Some there. That's my corn product. More of my, um, um, my gluten, I guess. Whatever you want to call it. I got to get my water. Hold on. All right, you know, the, the cooler, here's the Canyon cooler, a good quality cooler, uh, is where 
uh, not beer goes or cold drinks. Yeah, we just drink uh, water out of the thing. No, no alcohol at this camp. But here, you know, our bags potatoes. This would be our larder called the larder. Uh, I got to clean that up a little bit. Um, actually, you know, cabbage pickled things last really long uh, in here, but it's nice and cool. And so these these are really nice to have these under in that kit kitchen prep area and we're under the shade shade is everything man when you once you get shade on over your parking lot uh you get you start developing a, a better kitchen oh so i was thinking here you know i popped up indigenous and, and uh excuse me uh, homeless in the same sentence didn't mean to didn't mean to offend anybody didn't mean to offend anybody but indigenous has a system is an established long established system of of uh, kitchen life and develop your senses and your skills around that search around man not just on my channel maybe but what's what's an indigenous kitchen well, it's the structure. It's not a hierarchy necessarily. Sometimes it is. Somebody is like, my life is dedicated to uh, prepping and cooking food. Uh, that's my thing. And so they are uh, the kitchen queen. That's fine. And, uh, but in those, in these kitchens, transitory mobile kitchens where people are coming in and out of camp, um, <laughs> you've gotten your tribe together, you know, you're forming your tribe. All these things is uh, uh, life centers around food, of course. So um, getting your system dialed down is so important. Um, what I learned as a river guide, I was Grand Canyon river guide for a year and uh, um, got my health food service certification. So go through the county health department and learn, you know, about cleanliness and prep uh, this wouldn't, this, yeah, this would pass. It has to. We do our best. You know, nothing's perfect out here. But, uh, yeah, let's cut up a beet here. See what's inside this beautiful red beet. I hope this light is okay, man. Because uh, you can't really see. All right, so we have beets. But uh, beets red looks like meat. What about meat? Um, we bring it in and cook it. Every once in a while, but personally, I have taken the choice not to buy meat anymore. You know, the suffering animals. But it comes into camp, and uh, if it's here, I'm going to eat it. It's already processed. It's already cut up. Uh, not going to let it go to waste. I'm not that strict of a, a vegan diet. I totally make adjustments all the time around what's brought into the camp. And it's called uh, being a bottom feeder. When you're a bottom feeder, it means like... Uh, the food, your, your gut biome is really strong and you can handle a lot of bacteria and everything going into your gut system and it's the older food. But, uh, I seem to be one of those kind of people. So we're cutting up the beets and we'll put it into the mix. I need to find some potatoes. I got some potatoes and we'll put, we'll put the potatoes around the edge here and get that all lined up. All right. Yeah. So I washed the uh, potatoes over in the little washer in the yellow bucket and they were starting to yeah they're s starting to sprout so potatoes are like classic uh we'll save them we'll save them um but yeah they do go and you have to a, a good responsible cook will like notice that and like let's get it into the dutch oven and dutch ovens are great for cooking everything you know i could put them in like this why not let's just not even cut them up so Dutch ovens um, is minimizing your 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 dirtiness. So now this has to, of course, go over to the the dishes and be washed. But depending on your camp cleanliness, you know some some camps will say, "Oh no, man, leave it there and uh, cook more." So this is yeah a bacterial zone. You see, I don't use, I don't have wood yet. I'll get a nice wood block, but you know, these, these plastic based ones is, is for cleaning. So yeah, we're going to fill this up and get the enchilada sauce on there. Uh, I got some mushrooms. These are perfectly good mushrooms still, but uh, yeah, things that 
uh, oh gosh, excuse me, my words are mixed up. But I really searched for a biodegradable container, but now I have this plastic thing. So first choice, I always go in, I'm like looking at the container, what the food is in. Uh, more and more, I'm trying to really minimize my plastic. Oh, okay, so here's the enchilada sauce. It's pretty full. I'm just going to pour the, I'm going to go with red today. Pour that red. Red enchilada sauce. Red, oh, yeah. Get that in there. All right. And I found some old leftover cheese, grated cheese, which is really old. But not moldy or anything. It's just dried out. Time to eat it. So, um, oh, look at that cheese on there. It's looking great. And so we'll get that all spread out. And that looks good. Uh, two people, this is like three days of food for one person. It's uh, could be four days. So keeping this around, this is our, our food for several days. It's coming up right there. All right, tortillas. Uh, generally, you think enchiladas have tortillas. And uh, I decided not to because it's unopened and they're fresh. And so we're going to keep this for another meal. So I'm going to build a fire down here. First time ever in this spot against this rock wall. And we're going to cook our Dutch oven in here. So... Um, here's a thing I wish would happen. Um, so, you know, so-called homeless people or vagrants or people out down by the river under a bridge uh, like to cook, and uh, but they get busted all the time by the police and such. Somebody complains because, yeah, many, many cases where uh, uh, fires, big fires have been started by homeless people. So I wish that anybody in like the city, any city, would take a course from the fire department um, and the fire department would teach them about how to do a safe one and actually have zones in the city that doesn't have to be anything but where um, people can build fires to cook food. So I grabbed some newspaper that was flying around on the street already, so no big deal. And I try to do it with just two pieces. And I build like a little uh, uh, thing there, a little pyramid here. So I got my wood, and it's building up. Got some debris, put that in here. Small sticks, building my little nest. And you actually build a nest. You see my nest? I hope you can. So I'm just building my nest. Maybe I'll just put it right here. There we go. Yeah. Let's see if this starts. So many people are going to say at this moment, Ah, he doesn't know how to build a fire. But I do. But I'm not being very neat about it at the moment. Oh. There we go. Build these chips. Then we'll get a... A few others around here. Oh, there we go. Now we're making the little house. The little, the little house on the prairie is going to go up and cook us some food. Oh, oh, do do do. And uh, yeah, that's why I love I love this eagle lighter, man. It's just uh, it's it's every intent. It's like we're gonna have good food and sing. Hey. So, we'll get our fire lit up. There, man. Don't you love Zippos? Yeah, I'll just get in here.
All right, so I'm gonna take some of these with my shovel. I got my little hand shovel and move some of these coals in here. See, it's kinda still almost on fire. So yeah, I'll, these will burn out pretty quick, but yeah, time to, oh, the dog likes it. He thinks it's fabulous. And uh, move this onto here. Woo, baby. Hot. Yeah, getting those up on there. Whoa, whoa. Hot, hot. And then, remember that pot holder I made? This, I'll use this temporarily. Let's move it on to the coal bucket. There we go. Oh, it's a little uneven. I'm gonna fix that. Hold on. There, that little flame's about to go out, the last flame, but you can see it's nice and warm. So we'll let this cook for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. So we'll come back in 30 minutes and check it out. Oh wow, yeah, that's hot. Super hot. Nice. I think success on this one. Yeah. Give the thumbs up, like, share, subscribe to the crazy uncle. Uh, so it's been cooking, you know, 20 minutes or so, maybe. It smells good. I can smell cook up at the top. The top went good, so a tube. My metal tube. You blow through the tube into the fire. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And that, uh, keeps it warm. So it's a good tool to have. Get yourself a tube. <laughs> Been working on that to go with our, our meal out there. So yeah, it's just cooking off here at the end of the deck. I'm gonna take these Napolitos, these cactus, put those onto the fire here and we'll roast those up. So yeah, looking good. Looking really good for you. Lovely. Oh, you hear it? Cooking. I'm so excited. I gotta look. Let's take a look. Grab it. Right, ready? Yeah. Okay, we just let it go a little bit, but I I'm done here. So we'll open this up and, and kick off the coals on to the cactus. But yeah, so good. And then I can grab it. And oh, it closes a little more. Tippy, be quiet. But move it off the fire and off to the side. Let it, let it sit there. Move our coals up. And maybe we can have an evening fire too, man. After having this wonderful meal, we'll just be up there. So yeah, I'll bring these down and hook up the cactus. Uh, I forgot to put the garlic in, but hey, man, let's just throw it into the fire. Oh, oh, get back in there, get in there. There, we'll just cook some garlic. That will be good. Oh, where's that garlic? Oh, there it is. Leather gloves, man. Even with the holes in the fingers. There's my garlic. And uh, looks like it's ready to eat. So we'll put that over there, so. We've got our nopali and the ace and that and our fruit. Coming together really nice. All right, the final test is eating it. Ooh, looks good. Let's get a scoop of this. Oh yeah, it's got the cheese on top. Eats. Oh yeah. Eat the colors of the rainbow. If you have a plant-based diet, because we don't do that much meat here, but uh, eating uh, that beautiful rainbow color. And uh, I'll get some garlic, got this garlic chunk, get a couple of those, that into my meal, 
yummy. Look at that potatoes right there. And uh, little milk bobbins here. I chopped those up. Got those. So that will go on. So yeah, enjoy. Hey man, so thanks for watching this one on the on the uh, video log of how to do a Dutch oven. Uh, subscribe, share, tell your friends. Let's get the word out. You know, so especially those folks who are really troubled, challenged these days to uh, pay rent, and they might be evicted and out on the streets. And what do you do, man? So this is uh, uh, my little bit of education for them. All right. Peace.